to be what? Righteousness. How can Abraham be righteous when he lied about his wife Sarah and said she's my sister? Is that righteousness? God said, I'm basing it on faith. Abraham believed God. He, did the, he, did, he supplied what God requires, faith. God did the rest and, 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 and changed a mathematical equation to say, Abraham, I'll let your faith equate to righteousness. So God can do what he want to do. <laughs> the Bible said, you know, he reigns on the just and the unjust. You know, uh, it says, he, you know, he has mercy on whom he wants, will have mercy upon. He has wrath on whom he will or wants to have wrath upon. And so God's grace is sufficient. And we read in the Bible so many places, his mercy endureth, what, for a short time? Forever. Forever. Well, if it only do it for New Testament time, if mercy is only good for, since Jesus was incarnated, if his mercy is only good for New Testament, you know, uh, uh, situations, you know, uh, those that lived before Christ's birth had no, have no hope. But the Bible lets us know they all are going to be included in the right, all that were righteous. And God has a, a, the standard you all of righteousness, of God's definition of right, changed and was different in New Testament times after Jesus' incarnation and, and death than it was before. Okay, there's, there, there's two different. And Paul says we're no longer, longer under the law, but we're under grace. And there was a scripture, I can quote it, but I don't have the, the book and the verse that I think it's in Hebrews. Those things, whatsoever things were written aforetime, was written for our knowledge, that we through the patience and comfort of the scripture might have hope. There's another scripture Paul writes in the book of Romans. That he talks about the Old Testament. He said at those times, God did wink. He winked at their unrighteousness. What do you mean wink? What do, what's a wink? You are? What do you, when you wink, you, your eye opens and closes, shutters, right? It's a closed eye. When you wink at somebody, you, you close your eye. There's a closing and opening. You know, he talked, uh, Paul talked with Romans about the foolishness and the, and the law and about the um, sins and disobedience of, of the Hebrews in the Old Testament. And he said in the book of Romans, it, during those times, God winked at them. How long did he close his eye? I don't know. <laughs> He w but now are calling men everywhere. The standard of righteousness has changed. And what's required of man, you know, based on the blood of Jesus Christ, has changed. So God can do what he wanted. All right. Uh, can I go on and teach you all a little something else about it? Let's get back to our, this, our journey. Let's walk in Jesus' steps. I want to talk about the crucifixion of Christ, moving to, to the crucifixion. Uh, moving to that time, you know we're journeying through the walk, through the uh, steps uh, of Christ. Palm Sunday was last Sunday. Talked about last Wednesday, him being tried from Judgment Hall to Judgment Hall, the, the, the kangaroo courts, how he was he was wrongfully, um, his trials that, they, they were, that there was held, the trials that were held for Jesus, it was against every cultural norm of, of, of Judaism, it was late in the night, you all remember, at night went from, 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 uh, 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 from the high priest Caiaphas' house and palace, which no court should have been held in this house or palace, went to Pontius Pilate, you know, and the, the charges were changed. They said that he had blasphemed from the Jewish perspective, but blasphemy couldn't get him crucified because that was not a capital offense for the Romans. And he had to, then they ended up crucifying him because he said he was king of the Jews, or well, they said that he said he was king of the Jews. All right, so he got, and why was that, why was that um, a capital offense? Because uh, Rome only had one monarchy, one ruler, Nero, or the leader of the head of Rome, only one uh, titular head, and, and that was the Roman emperor. And for there to be another king trying to rise up when there was a king on the Roman throne, 
that'll get you killed. And that, so that's from a Roman law perspective, that's how he was crucified. Um, let me share with you, and this is a tenet of faith, you all. I've told you, again, during the Passion Week and last seven days with Jesus Christ, what's happening in these last seven days is, I mean, extremely vitally important to our faith. You know, we can argue and talk about a lot of things Jesus did <clears throat> prior to Passion Week, prior to him entering into Jerusalem for the last time. You know, it, it's debatable. There's a lot of debatable things, et cetera. But the events that happened uh, from, from his entry to his resurrection, you all, we have to, the Bible puts added emphasis upon it. I've already argued with you and told you that or showed you that most ha more, almost half in volume, almost half of the gospel uh, 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 the volume of, of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John deals with what happens in the last week. And that's, all, when you think about it, he lived 33 and a half years. A whole lot, not, very little says at 12 years old about his childhood. More picks up at age 30 with his public ministry. But, 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 he, pre, but he ministered from 30, age 30 to age 33 and a half. And um, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John spends most of their time on the last week of his life. Why? Because that's the reason why he came. You know what's interesting? If Jesus had not healed one person, if he had not opened up, uh, if it had not opened up one blinded eye, if he had not fed you know, 5,000, uh, or let me put it this way, he could have fed the 5,000, he could have opened up the blinded eyes, he could have healed the woman with the issue of blood, he could have visited Zacchaeus' house. He could have, uh, you know, turned the water into wine at the wedding feast. If Jesus would have did all of that and not died, we'd be lost. Did y'all get that? Yes, there were miracles. Yes, he did a lot of things. Yes, he, you know, he, he you know, uh, you know, so, 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 so all of those, most of the miracles Jesus did, by the way, the Bible says <clears throat> that he was being moved with compassion. He felt a need. He felt the compassion. He felt, he felt uh, empathy and sympathy with the, with the plight of men and women. And so he acted to cure their circumstances. Uh, I don't want to be, I don't want to belittle this or be light on it, but the miracles along the way. It's not really why Jesus came. <laughs> Had he done all that and never got to Calvary, he missed his purpose. When they asked Jesus what was his mission statement, he said, the Son of Man have come to seek and to save them which are lost. That was his purpose statement. That was his that was his that was his goal. That was his ambition. That was that was his his personal statement for his life. I came to say those that are lost. So 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 I'm, I'm emphasizing that to say again, we're focusing in on these last days because it's ultimately important for us to have a, a, a biblical understanding of these events, you all. This is what this is the difference between you being saved or not being saved. And I know in Christianity, I know in religious circles, I know in, 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 in ecumenicalism, I know in, 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 in secular and spiritual, in church, outside of church settings, a whole lot of talk, argument, discussion goes on. And, uh, uh, you know, you can engage in it if you like to. Most of it is not important except for that that focuses in on Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. You know, we can get into a whole lot of discussion, a whole lot of arguments, a whole lot of things. But, but, but what's central and what's essential is you got to believe <laughs> that he died. I mean, that he really actually died. Not, not comatose, not went into a coma, not the swoon theory, not, you know, halfway dead. You got to believe that he died. Then you have to believe that he actually came alive from the dead. If you don't believe he died, you can't believe he was resurrected. And there's some, and be saved. There's some that believe he died, 
that can't grasp and can't get around the fact, how did a dead man get up? But you got to believe in the resurrection because that's your hope. What happened to Jesus is what's going to happen to us. And you got to believe in a bodily resurrection. They didn't steal his body. They didn't take, they tried to concoct stories. They put guards around the tomb to make sure he didn't get out. <laughs> but guess what, y'all? The guards couldn't hold him. The graves couldn't hold him. The cords couldn't hold him. You know, you know the tomb couldn't hold him. The rock rolled in place of the, across the, 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 the cave or the stone couldn't keep him in there. Matter of fact, I told you before, that rock that was rolled across the stone to, to seal the, so to make sure the Roman, and the Roman soldiers, they put the Roman signet. They used the, the ring, the authority of Roman government to seal it so that nobody couldn't break the seal. You couldn't cross that, 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 that precious sacred point and break the governmental seal or you would be killed. But the rock didn't keep them in there. And the stone was not moved, y'all, truthfully. Jesus could have got out and got out if the stone would have stayed there. <laughs> the stone wasn't moved there to keep Jesus in. They thought it was. And let me say this. It wasn't even rolled away to let Jesus out. The stone was rolled away to give us a look in. So we can see empty. Y'all missed that. Y'all missed that. <laughs> the stone was rolled away not so Jesus can get out. It was rolled away from that, that mouth of that cave so we can get a look in. And become witnesses. He is not here. But he is risen just like he said. All right, having said that, let me deal with, uh, oftentimes the question arises that I want to deal with tonight, and you've got a handout, and uh, um, for those, if you don't have one, I think there's some available. Uh, you know, the question oftentimes comes up, and we talk about Good Friday, you know, Good Friday. We're going to have Good Friday service here at 12 noon uh, uh, this Friday, but, but there is a disparate, there's a discrepancy in our nomenclature, in our verbiage, in our traditional talking and thinking, you know. Uh, how do you get from... Good Friday, he died on Friday. And he rose early Sunday morning. <laughs> Am I right? Y'all ever heard that before? <laughs> okay. Well, if he did that, I got a biblical problem. Dying on Friday and rising on Sunday causes me a grave, a serious, I should say, um, <laughs> script, prop, biblical, scriptural problem. Because you got to get to three days and three nights. Dying on Friday, y'all tell me. <laughs> and getting up on Sunday, how many days is that? Two. How many nights is it? I'm going to get about two or three different answers. So. <laughs> Can we agree it ain't three days? I know I'm just, my, excuse my language. It is not <laughs> three nights. <laughs> Can we agree to that? So, so, so Pastor, how, how, help. Help me out this quiet. How do we get there? Well, and, and, and we gotta, you gotta understand that we have to be biblically correct, not not religiously correct, not not contemporary, not 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 um, common saying correct, but but we gotta be biblically correct. Uh, the, the problem oftentimes with the three days, three nights problem is that people start with our tradition of Good Friday. That. And, and, and I know the church, Christianity, is guilty of this for a long time that, you know, I don't know, I don't, well, I didn't, I didn't choose to study all together, 
the historical um, context of how Good Friday originated and all of that. But, but, but it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an attempt to set aside a day to commemorate and reflect his death. Problem is, the church world got the day wrong. Now, either, either the church world, religious religiousosity, religious institution, tradition, either tradition going to be right and the Bible going to be wrong, or the Bible's going to be right and tradition has to be wrong. <laughs> but you can't have both. You can't have both. And, and what you have to start at in the Bible, you all, you got to start with the scripture. And in the scripture, I want to walk you through and read, uh, you, you can't just start at Good Friday. You got to start with resurrection morning. All right? Because the Bible, there's no scripture in the Bible that says he died on a Friday. There's no scripture in the Bible that mentions Good Friday, and I know even that that's a that's a that's an oxymoron. There's some ironic about Good Friday, and what we're really talking about is his death and his suffering. And if you really study how 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 much he suffered. How excruciating, how painful, how ugly. Anybody saw some years ago the movie The Passion of Christ? The Passion of Christ, from what I have seen in my lifetime, is probably the closest I've ever seen, you know, in terms of visual and pictorial and movies, uh, the, probably the closest depiction uh, of, of, of how ugly, how maligned, how horrific, how terrible, how, 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 how painful his death was. You know, we sit here 2,000 plus years away from it, and we can't almost can't even imagine, you know, uh, uh, and don't, we almost have lost, lost, uh, lost uh, the, the ability to really feel and, 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 and embrace the severity of his punishment. You know, and the Passion of Christ was one picture, was one movie that, that, that zeroed in that it, as much Mel Gibson and what he did to that. But, but, but you got to start, you got, so how do you get, how is that good? Now we know ultimately the good is he paid the price for our sins. But Jesus didn't think it to be good. And you, I, we dealt with this agony in the garden. You, he prayed until drops of uh, uh, blood, sweat came down his brow as the, like, there was blood. While he was being whipped and spat upon and slept and speared and made fun of. And, and, and you know, they took a whip. They took a whip. They put, they put the teeth of animals at the end of leather strips. And they put the bones of animals, and they and some of them sometimes the Romans used. Sometimes they had iron marbles uh, for flagging when they when they flagged the a, 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 a victim. But what they did with the teeth of animals and the bones of animals, sharp instruments, sometimes um, even um, metal, at the end of the whip, the flagging, when they whipped you, and the the the, the leather wraps around your torso. And when they pull it back, the teeth and bones and iron pieces and uh, other, uh, of, of other things at the end of that, rip, it rips your skin off. And they kept doing it. And so he was scarred and marred and beaten until he wasn't even recognized. Isaiah 53 tells you he wasn't recognized. His visage was marred. And, and, so, and, and so you can tell how his back, his torso, and everything was just, you know, and sometimes it was on the face, on the leg, on the, wherever else on the body. You know, and, and they, that was an excruciating pain. But what, then they pierced to take a spear, a, 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 a sword, and pierce him in the side. And, 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 and they put the throat, the actual, if you ever touched a thorny bush in your hand, you say, ouch, on a rose bush or something thorny. They took 72 of those and platted them together and made a crown. And forced them three and four inch long uh, thorns into his skull. You know, and, and, and blood is coming out of his, even his skull in, in an excruciating way. So Good Friday 
you know, we, 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 we like to draw nice pictures and nice analogies, but it, but it was, it was a excruciating suffering death. So what we got to start with, we got to start with his resurrection. And in the gospel of St. Matthew, here again, I keep saying I sound redundant like a broken record, but it's, I'm saying it because it's important. St. Matthew, St. Mark, St. Luke, St. John, all four gospel writers write the same thing, almost identical as it relates to Jesus' resurrection. You got to start with him getting up out of the grave. Matthew, let's turn to St. Matthew, chapter number uh, um, uh, 16, 16 chapter of Matthew's gospel. Matthew 16 and 21. This is, this is resurrection, you all. This, this tells us the timing and the date. I'm going to back into something of why we know we can believe it, 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 it was, it, we can verify three days uh, and three nights. Uh, <clears throat> I think I wrote, did I write 16 and 20? It should be 26 and 1. I may have write, written on your sheets if you got it. I think our, uh, it, was, uh, it was a typo. Yeah. Um, let me see if I get it right. Let me tell you what. Let me, let me tell you what it is. It's, it's St. Matthew chapter number 28 on your paper and, on, and even on there, Sister, Sister Glenn. St. Matthew, I have chapter 16, verse 21. That was It's correctly is St. Matthew chapter 28. That's my fault, my type, and verse number one. I'm going to walk you through in St. Matthew chapter 28 and verse one. Here's the resurrection story. Here's how all the gospel writers start talking about when Jesus, uh, the events of the resurrection, what happened. St. Matthew chapter 28, verse one. In the end of the Sabbath, in the end of the Sabbath, all right, Sabbath is the sixth day, the day, the Shabbat, the day of rest. He created the worlds in Genesis chapter 1 and in, uh, in six days, and on the seventh day he rested. Okay, that'd be rest, Shabbat. At the end of the Shabbat, the Sabbath, okay, uh, uh, at, which is day seven, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, Sabbath, the seventh day, there's only seven days in the week. And after seven comes day one, right? First day. So at the end of the Sabbath, as it begin, early in the morning, as it begin to dawn, that's, that's in the early wee hours of the morning, towards the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and other women to see the sepulcher. They come in. Jesus has been crucified. Uh, he's been put into a borrowed tomb. Um, uh, now it's the end of the Sabbath, day after Saturday night. And it's the begin early wee hours of the morning, a.m. on the first day of the week. Matthew says, first day of the week. Y'all got that? St. Mark chapter 12. Go over one more book. <clears throat> he says the same thing. Um, it's the first, first day. And it should be uh, St. Mark chapter 16. Boy, I really messed these up. I don't know how I got that. Okay. St. Mark chapter 16 is what I'm referencing. St. Mark chapter 16 and verse number uh, 1 and 2. And when the Sabbath was passed, St. Mark 16 and 1, when the Sabbath was passed, same thing that Matthew said, when Saturday in English was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother James and Salome brought sweet spices and they came to anoint the dead body of Jesus because they thought it, they didn't have time because of the kangaroo trials, it happened at night, in the middle of the night. They did not have time to properly prepare his body. But Mary did, y'all. Verse 2, Mark chapter 6, verse. And very early in the morning, what day of the week? What is the first day of the week? Okay, Sunday is the first. How do you know Sunday is the first day of the week? Saturday. Saturday, and, and Genesis chapter 1 would tell you, you know, about he created on day 1, day 2, day 3, day 4, day 5, day 6, and he rested on the seventh day, okay, which is the Sabbath, the Shabbat. That's what, that's what, that's what Sabbath means. Sabbath is, means, Shabbat means to rest. And I told you all, God didn't rest because he was tired. He rested because he had completed what he set out to do. And he rested to set in, in, in place into the earth, into the world. All right, everything in the world, everything in nature has a resting season and period. And so he, he rested to, 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 to um, implement and to, and to 
highlight the principle of everything needs to rest. Okay, not God, but he rested because he had completed his work. The first day of the week, that's the point in Mark. Could turn to, let's go to Luke's gospel. Oh, I know what it, I know. I know what I, I know what I did. I'm, I'm, it's right on the on the on the biblical fact piece. You are. I, I was reading I'm, I was something else. I want to get to. I'm correct. I know I shouldn't have made that that kind of mistake. <laughs> but under the biblical fact, uh, Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24 and verse number one. Saint Luke chapter 24 and verse. Matthew said after the Sabbath early the first day of the week. Mark said the first day of the week. Luke, what do you have to say about Jesus' resurrection? Luke 24, 1. Now upon the, what day of the week? First day of the week. Very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulcher, bringing spices which they had prepared and certain others. Go to John, St. John, chapter number uh, 20. St. John 20. It's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John all say, John says it a little differently. And then Matthew, Mark, and Luke, but everything John said was always had his own twist. St. John chapter 20, verse 1. The first day of the week, come Mary Magdalene early when it was yet dark unto the sepulcher and see it the stone taken away from the sepulcher. All right. What we know factually, if you ever ask what day of the week did Jesus get up from the grave? What day was Easter? What day was he resurrected? It was the first day of the week. We call it Sunday now in the Roman calendar. Okay, it's the first day of the week, which is Sunday. That's what, how do you know he got up on Sunday? Matthew, Mark, Gospel of Matthew said it, Gospel of Mark said it, Gospel of Luke said it, Gospel of John said it, all right? And they were under the Holy Ghost as they wrote and inspired. God wanted us to know that resurrection occurred on Sunday morning. And this, by the way, this is not why I'm, by, my, part of my teaching, but let me just put a, 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 a pin in something. Um, People ask in this day and time, the Hebrew and those who are following black Hebrewism and y'all not keeping the Sabbath. And we keep the Sabbath because they say that because you ain't worshiping. If Jesus got up on a Sunday, which now becomes the Lord's day. That's what Sunday is, the Lord's day. And I can prove to you and show you that Pentecost, the day of Pentecost in Acts 2 and 4 was on a Sunday. Had to be because it's 49 days or seven weeks uh, after uh, the Feast of Passover, 49 plus one more day. Pentecost, I mean, Passover ended on, on, a, on a Saturday, on a Shabbat. That's 49. There's seven days, seven weeks, each having seven days in there. Seven weeks times seven days is 49 days. And the Bible said, and the day after the 49th day is Pentecost. Pentecost means 50. Pente don't mean 49, it means 50. So it had to, it was, Pentecost was on a Sunday. So that's why we worship on a Sunday. So let nobody back, don't let anybody back you in the corner and try to make you feel that uh, what you're doing is not biblical. Yes, y'all stuck in Old Testament time. We're, we're operating, all right, under, under the liberty of grace, the freedom of grace, and doing what Jesus did. That's not the point in this, but okay. So we start that we do know he got up on the first day of the week. Now, Jesus himself said, and uh, in, in Matthew chapter 12, <clears throat> the 12th chapter of Matthew's gospel, uh, let's hear Jesus' own words about his resurrection or how long he would stay in the earth. In St. Matthew chapter 12 and, and verse number 40, as Jesus was teaching, here's what he, what he said to the disciples in, in Matthew 12. For as Jonah was three days and what, three nights in the whale's belly. Anybody know who Jonah was? Jonah was that recalcitrant, disobedient priest or preacher or prophet that God told to go to Nineveh. And Jonah did, uh, got rebellious, said, I'm not going to Nineveh. I'm going the whole opposite direction. I'm going to Joppa. And he was in disobedience, and God sent a big fish, right, to swallow Jonah up, right? And, and, and any Sunday school student about, if you ever, how many days did Jonah stay in the belly of the whale? 
three days and Jesus knew his Old Testament scripture. He said, just as Jonah, because Jesus prepared the fish that swallowed Jonah, right? And he said, as Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart or belly of the earth. Jesus said that. And if he said it, every word of God is right. It had to happen according to as he said it. This is what he said before his crucifixion and before his resurrection. All right. Uh, in John chapter 2, St. John chapter 2, turn to the second chapter of John real quick. St. John chapter 2 and verse number 19. Jesus said not only he used the analogy of Jonah, but he says, and this is what got him in trouble, uh, helped to get him crucified uh, because they brought this up when he was back uh, before Caiaphas about destroying the temple and, and, and building it in three days. In St. John chapter number 2 and verse number 19, um, Jesus answered and said unto them, destroy this temple, and in how many days? I would do what? They thought he was talking about the temple in Jerusalem. He was talking about his body. Destroy this body, and in three days, I'm going to raise it up. Okay? Now, again, Jesus said it, it had to happen with specificity, exactly the way he said it. It couldn't be two days and two nights. It couldn't be four days and three nights. It couldn't be, you know, two nights and four days. It had to be, Jesus said, three days and three nights. That, that's what, and, and the scriptures, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John said he got up very early, the first day of the week after the Sabbath was dawning, meaning and did, and was, was, or was, was over ending, and Sunday, the first day of the week was coming. It was early in the wee hours of the morning. Uh, it's when Jesus got, was resurrected from the grave. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, another verse I want to just reference. In the 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians, the resurrection chapter. And Paul said, this is the instruction that I got. This, this is what the revelation that was given to me in, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, uh, be, begin with verse number, uh, I'll begin with verse number three. For I, I delivered unto you first of all, or in primary order, um, what, that which I also receive, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scripture. And he paused at verse four, and that he was buried, he died, he was buried, and that he rose again on what day? Third day, according to the scripture. The Bible calls itself the scriptures, you all. That's the, the Bible calls itself the scriptures. So Paul said, I'm giving to you what was given unto me, that he, first of all, primarily in this order, he died, he was buried, and he rose again on the third day, according to the scriptures. When the men of Emmaus, when you remember those two men that were walking after Jesus was resurrected from the grave and Jesus was talking to them and their hearts burned within, uh, in, in the gospel of Luke, you found in the 24th chapter of Luke's gospel, Luke 24 and verse number 21, when Jesus got finished talking with them, they said, did not our hearts burn within us as he spake to us by the way? And look what they, in their conversation with Jesus in Luke chapter 24 and verse number 21, uh, um, when Jesus was walking, this is, he got up from the grave, he's walking with them. Luke 24 uh, and verse number uh, 21, when G they were saying, you, are you a stranger in Jerusalem? You don't know what's happened. We're sad. And, and where you been? You know, you, you don't know what happened. And they said to Jesus, not knowing who he was, um, verse 21, we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. We thought that the man that died and was crucified would be our redeemer and our Messiah. We trusted that he would be the redeemer. And these two men said, and besides all of that that happened, they said, today is the third day since he got crucified. So today is the third day since he, since he got crucified, since all this happened. Because they're reciting 
They're telling, they're talking to Jesus like Jesus don't know what's going on. And Jesus was playing along with them, asking them questions because their eyes were beholding. They didn't even know him. And Jesus, and they're telling Jesus about himself. The man got killed. We thought it was going to be our redeemer. We thought it would be our son. And, and, and we, we don't have no hope. You want to know why we sad? Because we thought this man was going to be our redeemer. And matter of fact, he, they said, this is the third day. Why'd they say that? Because all their hopes were predicated upon and understood that he going to get up on the third day. It's been three days and no sign of him. <laughs> but they didn't know they was talking to Jesus. I set all that up to say to you all to say, so when we deal with the fact of whether or not Jesus was truthful or what we believe, or is it actually factual? that he would stay in the grave three days and three nights, you got to start with when he got up and then work your way backwards in order to arrive at when he was crucified. <clears throat> Y'all with me so far? And so what we know that then a uh, couple things, and on your, on your handout if you got it, a couple things, you got to first of all understand Jewish days uh, started in the evening uh, at sunset or in the evening, and, and it starts from evening, from sun, it really goes from sunset, all right, the whole, if you want to, it's not a 24-hour day, but the whole day, a Jewish day, is sunset to sunset. The sun is going down now, y'all see it's getting a little dark, it's sun is here, from sunset, this is, um, this is a Wednesday, was just the 27th of, of March, and so this is like the first day of a Jewish day. We're doing a Roman Catholic, but, but a day in the Jewish way would be right now, uh, sunset, setting till sunsetting tomorrow. Would be a whole, if you want to say, 24-hour day. But it goes from sunset to sunrise is what the night goes. And why does it? So, so you got to first of all know, that, why, why is that the case? Uh, go to the book of Genesis for a minute. Genesis chapter 1. First chapter of Genesis, you understand, you go, I'm going to tell you about the Jewish calendar, then we're going to talk about how it translates into Roman, because they changed the Jewish, they changed the Jewish calendar system, uh, and we, we, we operate on Rome. By the way, Orthodox Jews and most Jews, not even Orthodox Jews, if you, I don't even know what, uh, what year this is. This is like the year 1900 and something on the Jewish calendar, because they count chronologically. Year one, year two, year three, year four, year five, year six. All right, they don't do the, they didn't do the, adopt the Roman system. And the Jews get their counting system from the Bible. Genesis chapter one, <clears throat> verse number five, when the creation story, all right, and when God said, let there be and all that, and divide. Verse five, God called the light day and he called the darkness night. And the evening and the morning, what does your Bible say? were the first day. Did y'all get that? Evening and the morning. He didn't say morning and evening. It started in Genesis, God's counting system for day one, and the evening and the morning was the first day. Y'all with me? Verse eight, you, you just keep reading. And God, and God called the firmament, the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. Genesis chapter 1, verse 13. And the evening and the morning was the third day. You with me? Verse 19, chapter 1, verse 19, Genesis. And the evening and the morning was the fourth day. Verse 23. And the evening and the morning was the fifth day. All right? And then lastly, verse number 31. And God saw that everything he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning was the sixth day. All right, the evening and the morning was the sixth day. If you go into chapter 2, verse number 3, and God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in it he had, he had rested from all his work which God created and made. All right, so there's only seven days, right? And, and, and the seventh day he rested. Day one, two, three, four, five, and six. Sixth day he created man. Day seven he rested. After day seven, the cycle starts again, and you're back at day number one. All right? Day number seven, he rested. If he rested day number seven, y'all, what day was rest day? 
Saturday, the Shabbat. And if Saturday, according to the Roman calendar, if Saturday is day number seven, what's day number one? What comes after Saturday? Sunday. All right? So, so first day of the week he got up. Not the second day, third day, fourth day, not the sixth day. He got up on first day, Sunday uh, of the week. All right? Is when, when he got up. Now, uh, so the Jews count their, their days from evening to morning just as God gave it to them in Genesis um, and then it's not a full, don't get it, mix it, don't get it twisted. It's not a full 24-hour day like we count, we get 24 hours from the Romans said, we're going to take the day, we're going to divide it into 24 hours. And that's, how, that's the system they gave us. And we adopt it. Sometimes the Jewish days don't last a full 24 hours. It's based upon the going down of the sun and the rising. Sometimes it's 24, sometimes it's 21, 22, based on the, the, the positioning of the sun and, and the winter and summer solstice and et cetera. Talk to any Jewish person today, they'll let you know, they'll tell you. It's not by hours. It's by the sun setting and the sun rising. Okay. Um, let, let's, one thing, and then I'm, fin I'm, I'm going, I'm going to wrap this up. I'll, I'll, I'll go through the diagram. But, but one other thing, turn to Matthew 27, 27 chapter of Matthew and verse number 45. Because you got to know, um, well, I'm going to turn to Matthew 27, 45. Then I'm going to take you to Mark because I want to prove something. You got to know when Jesus died, or at least, you know, uh, how long he hung on the cross. It's believed he died somewhere between 12 and 3. You, you, you might can get away to say he died at 3 o'clock or 3 p.m., which was, again, he hung on the cross uh, from the, he hung from the actually the 3rd to the 9th or from the 6th to the 9th. And I'll, I'll tell you, Mark shows it was, it was um, they put him up there at 9 a.m. in the morning or at the third hour. But Matthew chapter 27 and verse number 45, um, uh, 45th verse of, of Matthew 27. Now from the 6th, Hour. These are Jewish hour, Jewish counted uh, time clocks. From the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. The, the Jews um, broke theirs down. It, it was the third hour of the day. The sixth hour, it was in three hour segments. Third, six, nine, twelve. All right, uh, three, six, nine, twelve. The first hour, it was at first three, six, nine, ten. At nine a.m. was the third hour. Three hours later was the sixth hour. Three hours plus three plus three is six. The third hour, which is 9 a.m., the sixth hour is 12 noon. All right. The ninth hour is three hours later, which is three o'clock. If, if you had a, not a digital clock, but a round circular clock, you got 9 a.m., you got 12 noon, straight up, and you got three o'clock p.m. Um, so Matthew says uh, in the verse that, that we just read, from the sixth hour, let me interpret it. From 12 noon, there was darkness over the land until 3 o'clock p.m. From 12 to 3, from the 6th hour to the ninth hour. Let's go to the book of Mark, because I want to show you something in Mark's gospel. Mark chapter number um, <clears throat> 15. Matthew only says darkness. He talks about darkness. Why was there darkness? Because, again, you are the S-U-N, the actual sun, the light in the sky. God pulled the switch on it. He turned off the light. Because, why did he do that? Because the S-O-N, -S his only begotten son, was shining, his hour of glory. He darkened the S-U-N so that Jesus, his son, could have all glory at that time from 12 noon to 3 p.m. Do you know how, how difficult or miraculous that is? Not, not difficult for God, but how miraculous. Generally, the sun's at its zenith at 12 noon, especially 12 to 3. God said, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm not going to let it be covered by stars. or clouds. I'm just going to turn out the light of the sun and let my S-O-N, only begotten son, shine. Now, Mark tells us that Jesus was put on the cross at 9 a.m. in the morning. Mark chapter 15, 15th chapter of, of St. Mark, verse number uh, 25, Gospel of Mark, St. Mark 15 and 25. I'm, fin I'm wrapping up, you all. Just give me just a few minutes and I'll make, make my point. St. Mark chapter 15 
<clears throat> in verse number 25. Mark is the only gospel writer that tells us when he was put on the cross. Matthew said darkness came between 6th and ninth hour, between 12 and 3 p.m. Mark says, and it was the third hour, and they crucified him. Third hour is 9 a.m. in the morning. So he's put on the cross. I already walked y'all through, we already got, got through you all what he did at night to go the, the, um, go into the, the, the judgment halls, and they finally say, crucify him. We want him, we want release Barabbas, give us, the crucify Jesus. They bring him out of the prison, all right? They beat him, they whip him, they make fun, they put him on the cross, all right? Remember, it's wee hours of the morning, remember? Mark says it was at 9 a.m. when they crucified him. Go down from the 25th verse, same chapter, 16 chapter of Mark, to verse number 30, 33. They put him on the cross, or they crucified him at 9 a.m., at the third hour. And when the sixth hour came, he says the same thing, Matthew. They put him on the cross at 9 a.m. When the sixth hour, 12 noon, came, there was darkness over the whole land until how long? The ninth hour. Three hours of eclipse or darkness from 12 noon to 3. And when the ninth hour, verse 34, Mark says, when the ninth hour came, when 3 p.m. came, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, 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 Lama Sabathani, which is being interpreted. He said, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? And then other, you can read others, but he, uh, he stood there. And then he, then he gives up the ghost. So Jesus dies. It's probably more accurately to say at 3 p.m. He's put on the cross 9 a.m. in the morning. And he's already been whipped and beaten and his clothes have already been gambled for. And he's already been, you know, flogged and, 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 and stripped and spat upon and, and, and smoked with the palm of their hands. You all remember that? Then he, he put, he's finally nailed to the cross at 9 a.m., they take them, you know, uh, to go go up the hill, and they raise up the wooden stakes, the wooden tree, the wooden cross. And there's two thieves on each side of him. And he's on there from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. That's a six-hour span alone. So, you know, six hours is a long time. Uh, imagine your finger being caught in the car door for six hours. <laughs> You know, it's, but you've been beat, you're already weak, you haven't, you, you've been up all night, you got no rest, you left from the Garden of Gethsemane, you know, you've been, you had the Last Supper, you, you had kangaroo trials, they, they, you've, been, you've been stripped and beaten and, and, and accused, falsely accused, and you're weak and torn, and, 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 and you're, on a, you're nailed to the cross that, early that morning, and 9 a.m., you, you, your cross stands upright, and you're hanging there, you know, suspended. And when crucifixion, most of them didn't die from the nails in their hands or in their feet. The body weight, the way that they crucified, your knees were, 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 were kind of bent so that your body, your torso, and your vital organs could succumb down, which meant that you couldn't, you, you, couldn't, you didn't have no foundation. Pick your feet up off that pew and try to, try to breathe, inhale next to you. You'll see how hard it is. You have nothing to, to, to muster up breath. So they died of asphyxiation most times besides the suffering and brutality. So he can't, he can't, he's, he can't hardly breathe because the weight of the hands, his body, and his organs are, are, are slumping down. And he can't have nothing the foundation to, to lift up. And he's struggling for every breath from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Then darkness hits from 12 noon to 3 p.m. And ultimately, according to Matthew and Mark and even John, and he gives up the ghost, it seems like about after the ninth hour, after 3 p.m. So he dies during the daytime, some, probably 3 p.m., between 12 and 3. He's hanging on the cross between nine, for at least six hours that we have a record of. Are y'all with me? Okay, let's look at the diagram. How do we get to three days and three nights? Let me wrap it up. The diagram, physical diagram, the way you get, get from three days to three nights that he actually died, because he have to be, it can't be anything else but that. 
according to what he prophesied. Matter of fact, if you read in the Old Testament, it said, cursed is a man that even hangeth upon the tree. And the law pre prohibited staying on the tree until, until uh, overnight, until the, sun, the sunset or Sabbath. Uh, that's in, you'll find that in, in, in Deuteronomy chapter 21, verse 23. But here's how it works. From the Jewish calendar and counting perspective, all right, it was, had to be Thursday. And for those who, 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 who follow a, a Catholic calendar or the, the, the Catholicism, they do Ash Wednesday, you know, which is the beginning of Lent that goes 40 days until crucifixion. And then, then you get to something during Passion Week. You get to something tomorrow night. Tomorrow night is what's called Monday Thursday from the Catholic perspective. M-A-U-N-D-Y. Monday meaning Holy Thursday. All right. Uh, because it's more, probably more accurate. That's when he actually died. So he dies. At, um, that's when he's, when he, when he's uh, yeah, when he died. He's on the cross during the day. From, from, you put on the cross at 9 a.m. on the morning on Thursday, 12 to 3 darkness, it gets dark. He dies, gives up the ghost about 3 o'clock or shortly thereafter. Y'all with me? All right. That's, 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 that's Thursday evening. So that's in the daylight, daytime. At, can I just approximate, say, about this time, since it's time, about this time the sun gets dark, it's sun setting on Thursday. And now, so day one, he, he's dying. He dies day one. Y'all with me? Because he dies about 3 o'clock, right? So it's still light outside. It's not sunset yet. It's in the day. So that's day one. Thursday night, he hangs on. He, well, you know, they take him off the cross, et cetera, because he couldn't hang. He couldn't date it because the Passover is coming. They come to break his legs, found that he was already dead to take him down. So now you've got the time is going to pass. Thursday night, Thursday night, in the, late in the night, midnight, all the way to the eight, we hours. That's night number one. You with me? Friday morning, the sun rises. Sun, sun rises Friday morning. All right, whatever time it rises. Okay, time is still. He's still dead. He's still in the grave. Right. So Friday morning, when the sun rises, uh, 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 Friday morning, that's day. Two. Y'all with me? When was day one? Day one was he died Thursday day, three o'clock. At night from sunrise, I'm sorry, from sunset all night until sunrise in the morning. That's night one. Y'all with me? The sun comes up Friday morning, all right, now, and that's day two because it's light outside, right? At, at this time on Friday evening, sun's going down, sunset, according to, and the evening and the morning, it's another day, so sunset. Now you're at night two. Sunset, y'all with me? Sunset Friday, all night Friday night, Saturday morning gets here. Saturday morning when the sun comes up, from sun up to sunset, Saturday morning, all right, you got day, uh, day number three. Y'all with me? Saturday night, the sun goes down about this time. Okay, Saturday night, all the way Saturday night, which is the Shabbat, which is, which is the, the, the Sabbath. And the Bible says in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and when the Sabbath was ending after Saturday night, early in the wee hours Sunday morning, after the Sabbath, early the first day of Sunday morning, he rises, he gets up. That's day three. Did I lose anybody? Y'all with me? That's the only way you're going to get uh, three days and three nights. Three days and three nights. Well, pastor, that's wrong because a good Friday is coming. Well, <laughs> I just told you Good Friday, the, the, the Good Friday is not biblically correct in terms of the timing of it. Are you with me? So, so that's the only way you're going to get, and it's not, three, it's not uh, uh, um, uh, three days of our, really, of our clock. 
is Hebrew days and Jewish days. But three nights and three days, according to the Bible, according to what the Bible and Jesus said, as Jonah was in the belly of the well, tear, destroy this temple, I'll, destroy, I'll raise it in three days, three nights. So he rises early the first day of the week, according to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And that's day number three. So he spent three days and three nights in the belly of the, of the earth. Just like Jonah spent three days and three nights in the belly of the whale. We got to believe that. And there's no wiggle room on that. But I mean no wiggle room. We, we got to, we have to scripturally, according, Paul said, according to the scriptures, 1 Corinthians 15. That's how you arrive at it. In case anybody was ever. <laughs> Questions? Before Jesus was born, yeah. they celebrated Passover. Yeah, Easter is a pagan holiday. Easter, it comes from, I, I get you, okay. Easter is a pagan holiday. It's the name of pagan holiday, Easter. Yeah. Which, okay, I got you on that. Yeah, but it's not, that's why I prefer to say Resurrection Day. <laughs> yeah, but, 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 yeah, yeah, you're correct. Um, Good Friday is just a, re a man-made religious way of celebrating commemorate his death, the death of what we want to commemorate as his death date, but it's not biblically accurate in the timing. That's what I'm trying to say to you. Yes, he died. No debate about that. But, but you can't start at Good Friday being his crucifixion day and have him to rise early in the morning the first day of the week and that equal three days and three nights. That's, that's what I'm saying. Elder Pamela. Yes. Yes. No. Yes. 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 And, and that was Wednesday night. And that, 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 yes. The answer is yes. Yep, yep. And he was, you know, all night long and et cetera. Again, we're dealing with Passion Week. We're dealing, dealing with Passion Week. So, any other? All right. Yeah, yes. I'm not sure. You might be right. I'm, I'm just not sure. I can, I can look it up to see six years difference. So you, you're saying if it's six years different difference, that would make uh, this being, this is 2024, that would make this be uh, 2018? Is that what you're saying? I'm not sure. I, 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 I want to differ on that, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I don't, I don't think it's, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I'm not sure. I can look it up, and I, and I got some very, very close, even some rabbis, some Jewish friends and rabbis that I can ask. And, uh, uh, but, but I'm not really, I don't want to speak to it factually. I just don't know right now. I didn't commit it to memory. But I do know they still go with their chronological years. The difference between them and the Roman calendar, they, they started with, day, with year zero and then one, two, three, four, five. Uh, the Roman calendar got adjusted by the Romans themselves. You know, uh, and, they, and, and they came up with their own uh, uh, mechanism of counting, their own calendar, different from the Jew Jews, because the Romans did not acknowledge the Jewish religion. And they wanted to do away with the Jews. That's why they did that. Any other? How many days did Jesus stay in the grave? How many nights? How you know? <laughs> All right. <laughs> and don't let nobody tell you different. <clears throat> You've got the, I gave you the handout that I created, and, and you can refer to that and reference that. And, uh, uh, but uh, it ain't going to change, so you can use it 30 years from now. It ain't gonna change, all right. It, it ain't gonna change. So, 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 so you have it. You're armed with it. You're equipped with it. 
Uh, everything can't be preached. Many things have to be taught. All right. The difference between teaching and preaching. Teaching uh, informs. You know, uh, and teaching explains. You know, a uh, uh, preaching proclaims. All right. So, so, so you need. And Jesus, he taught and preached in the synagogue. He did both. He really did more teaching than he did preaching. You know, because you know, he taught them all the time. He was always teaching them some lesson or another. Blessings be unto you. Thank God for you as we journey to, amen, uh, the resurrection. Looking forward to, to, to service on Friday. Here we go. Good Friday service. <laughs> uh, at 12 noon, amen. Uh, I didn't say that Good Friday was not... Uh, it's just not biblically correct in the sense of your being able to get to three days, three nights. All right. So it's what <clears throat> it's the tradition of man and it's what we call it. But long as you understand the biblical uh, biblical order and biblical facts, uh, then you can you can worship and celebrate um, in knowledge and in truth. All right. In spirit and in truth, as opposed to just being blinded um, <clears throat> by. That's why some of our again. Uh, the, the Catholic faith with Monday, Thursday, Ash Wednesday, and Lent se Lenten season and other high holy days, um, they're not that far off in those, uh, in the, from that perspective. Uh, but, um, but, 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 <clears throat> but we're going to be in service at 12 noon this Friday. It's our traditionally scheduled and traditionally set service of commemorating his crucifixion. Uh, so we can be in service this Friday. Of course, tomorrow... I want you to be, continue to pray for Sister Angie, uh, Angie Jackson, <clears throat> Matthews, and that family, the family of Brother James. We'll funeralize him tomorrow at 12 noon here. It will be the family hour. 1230 will be uh, the service start time is at 1230 tomorrow. And then also praying for uh, Sister Ebony um, McCree, Nelda Karen McCree, and that whole family, her mom and, and brother, uh, in the in the passing and transition of her father, that funeral is tomorrow at at 10 a.m., 10 and 10:30 I believe, or 10 and 11, 10 and 11 at Prayer Chapel, uh, off of Schaefer and um, uh, Fullerton, Fullerton, off Schaefer and Fullerton Prayer Chapel Church. Uh, I would say Schaefer Myers, 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 Myers and Fullerton, Myers and Fullerton Prayer Chapel Church of God in Christ, Pastor. Um, uh, Cranford, Jesse Cranford. Uh, so uh, pray for them and, 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 and surround them. Wrap your arms around them. <clears throat> this is just a season that we're in. And I pray and trust and ask God to let us get out of this season uh, of this, that, that we're in of, of this death <clears throat> and dying. Amen. So let's hold up those families in prayer. Remember Sister Smith, the Ways family, First Lady Ways, others that are still experiencing grief in their own way. Just remember them in your prayers. Amen. I'm going to prepare now and thank God for those listening in. So grateful for each of you um, that are part of our study tonight. Hope you got something out of it that was uh, worthwhile of you attending. Ask that you will, um, if you would be so kind and just uh, lend yourself to God to be used to bless the ministry uh, through a gift, uh, through through your gift of um, <clears throat> of um, um, and. Can make it over the present. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, ask you to give. Prepare yourself to give as God has blessed you to do on tonight. Amen. We thank God for each of you uh, that, that, are, that are here. Please stand and prepare to bring your offering. And those listening in, you can share through uh, automated mechanisms and through your means of giving of your devices that you're using. And God certainly will receive and bless you. Um, thank you. Thank you, Sister Tanya. All right. Um, thank God for each one of you that are here. And thank God for, for all of you. We're looking for resurrection service on Sunday morning. I want you to be present and be in person. Our young people will go forth on Sunday also with their recitations and um, that that they prepared <clears throat> on Sunday. Pray for, remember, Sister Madeline Ship that is, that is still in need of prayer and some of the saints you all reach out. Sister Elder Lundy, thank you. Uh, Elder Lundy, pray for Elder and Sister Lundy. They're under the weather 
uh, talked to him a couple of times this week, and he, he and she both uh, are under the weather. So pray for Elder Lundy. That's why he's not here, you all. And uh, faithful, faithful, as you know, if he's not here, there's something wrong. And he and Sister Lundy are under the weather. So pray for both of them uh, as they go through their, um, their, their health uh, dilemma at this time. Amen. God bless you. Anything further? Blessings to each one. Let's stand. Good to see all of you. I'm glad to see you all in Bible study. Thank God for you that you have a hunger. Your signal. Y'all encouraged me by your being here and letting me know that you still have a hunger and, uh, for the word of the Lord. And we thank God for you. God, how good and gracious you are and how delighted we are to call you our Savior, our Lord, and our Father, our friend. God, will you look on <clears throat> these needs that have been spoken, families that stand in need of your visitation, in need of your touch, in need of your hand upon their life. Will you strengthen them and keep them and cover them and heal them and comfort them and deliver from all evil, from all trouble. Look on everyone that's even gathered here tonight and those that have looked in through virtual mechanisms. Let your blessings be theirs. And God, go with us and keep us safe in your care. Remember the offering and those that gave tonight. Will you bless it and give back to your people abundantly according to their faith and their giving. And now we thank you for all you have done. Touch Sister Angie and that family. Touch Sister Ebony and her mother and her brother and all others who stand, Sister Supervisor Josie Bell and the passing of her husband, Pastor uh, Jesse Bell and Vanessa and uh, Charlene and Margaret and all that family. Remember them, Lord, and sustain and keep them, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. <clears throat> Everybody 